What's going on everybody? Today I wanna to do a really quick tutorial to show you how you can make and use gradients inside of Apple Keynote. Now, I know a lot of people maybe don't even know you can do this. I see people who will make transparent PNGs, bring them in from Photoshop and do other things like that. And again, it's like most things inside of Keynote, once you understand how to do it and sort of figure out where it's hidden, it's a really easy and good trick to be able to have because you can probably use it more than you think in a lot of your presentations. So here we are in Keynote. And today I've got this slide that I'm working on. And what I wanna do is I wanna talk about this event that I did in Amsterdam last year called On Brand. And I've got this really great photo of it. And I wanna be able to put their name or their logo up here at the top. But the problem sort of is, as you can see, I can sort of see it, but not really. It's a little bit hard to kind of see what's going on there. So I've got a couple different options that I could do that might be sort of simple. I could go in here and I can be able to put a drop shadow on it. And well, maybe that, that helps a little bit. I don't, I mean, here, let's kind of zoom in to see what's actually going on here. So you can see how, because I think, you know, the drop shadow is okay. So here, whenever I have this, I have the different options. I can take the opacity up, make it a little bit darker, make the blur a little bigger. And it's like, yeah, you know, I guess that, that probably helps. Yeah, I mean, that, that helps some, but you know what? I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of doing drop shadows and things like that because I like my type to be consistent. Um, I could do other things. Again, you could sort of do the, let's pull a shape out and let's make that blue and then kind of send that back to the background a little bit, right? So we can say, well, yeah, you know, that, that, that sort of works, but now I'm kind of had this big blue square there. So for me, the, the way that I like to do this actually is to create a gradient behind this, just because it's a little bit more of a subtle way to do it and you're not quite kind of so aware of what's going on. It's a trick I, I did a ton of times on different websites and things like that when you have these sort of really dense and busy photos. So creating a gradient, again, is pretty easy once you know how to do it. Start with just pulling out a basic square shape and sort of make that about the size of what you want it. And so again, all we wanna do is then just move that backwards so it's behind the type and blocks it out. Now, what you wanna be able to do to create it is you go over here to where you see fill and where it says color fill, we just wanna change that to gradient fill. Okay, great, that didn't really improve the readability of anything. So what we wanna be able to do is to be able to say, okay, in this case, I want the gradient, let's make it black but I want the bottom to be black too, because it can, it can do black to blue and maybe do that, but for this one, let's do black to black. So still not a gradient. So what are we talking about here? So now what we wanna do is go and hit the little color selector. And again, these are all the little tricks that are hidden in here, because what you wanna do is take that bottom color, and again, you can tell it's the bottom color by, you can see there, whenever you change it, that's the one that's there on the bottom, and this little opacity slider. If I take that down to zero, what's gonna happen now is whenever I do this, and it helps whenever you select it, there you go, and you do it to zero, now suddenly, bang, I get a gradient. Because now, that's a lot easier to be able to see what's going on. Man, you know what, maybe I think that top's a little too dark, because it obscures things a little too much, so let's put that at like 75%. And now I've got a really nice gradient there. But the thing is that for where this is sitting, I really wish it was sort of solid through here and then it started maybe about halfway down and then it went actually down into the whole shape because you can see the gradients from about there to there. I really wish it would start about there. So again, you can be able to work through that. And what you wanna do is again, change it from gradient fill to advanced gradient fill. Now, again, it's gonna look exactly the same way. Now there's a few different things that you can do here. One is that you saw this little line right here showed up. And what this allows you to do is to set kind of where do you want that gradient to be able to start. It's the same thing where you'll see now there's a palette over here and it has these little color blocks in it. And so if I just drag that one there, you can see how the gradient now starts to move and it moves down a little bit. And so now I like that a little bit better, but I'm sort of feeling like whenever that color, maybe that's a little bit too dark again. So you just click on it, it turns blue. And now again, in the color palette, I can lighten that up a little bit. So now maybe like a 60% feels a little bit better. But the other thing you can do here too is that you can create more advanced gradients. So the other thing I can do is if I move this back to the top and say I want this to be full black at the top. But if I just go in here and click, just anywhere down below this timeline, all of a sudden you see here's another little color that drops in. And what I can do is now start dragging that around and so here again, if I go back in and say, I want that to be full black and I want it to match. So if the top is 60%, let's match that. Now what I can do is to get a, a darker top piece of that 
and then it's got a shorter fade on the bottom. And again, you can also go in here and control where does like how much of that gradient actually comes in. So in this case, I want that dark black to really just be up there at the top, have it fade in, be able to do something like that. So it's nice, again, maybe a little bit lighter, but that's really it, right? It's just that ability to come in and now I've got something that's behind there that I can use behind a photo. You can use it, again, if you wanna spice up, like we'll say, keep that, get rid of the image. Let's make the background a little bit of a different color here. So I don't know what, what are we feeling like? Maybe a yellow. So here again, what this is something nice I can do is just be able to add in and make this have a little bit more personality. So in that case, you know what, let's put it at the bottom. So flip it vertically, put it down there at the bottom. So now again, that has a little bit more of a personality than what it would be if it was just a flat color. And here again, same thing, you can click on it, I can change that out. So now if I want it to be more of an orange, so it has a little bit more of that feeling, make it a red. But so again, it's a simple little trick, but it adds something that's just sort of really nice to it. But this way you don't, you're, you're, it keeps your deck sizes a lot smaller. You're not pulling in these big PNG files or big, you know, sort of Photoshop files or things like that. And again, it's just, it's a simple way to be able to have these elements. And because then that's the other thing is then, then what you can do is whenever it understands them this way, you can go in and be able to do different animations with them. So again, if I do change the opacity, come in, do a dissolve. So now I can have that fade away. So if I want to have that change a little bit over time, if I want to do something like that. So again, I even do automatically. Now it'll just maybe happen automatically over time. So it gives a little more personality to these slides. Like I said, it, it's just a simple trick to be able to have in your arsenal. And again, I think it's just, it's a nice thing to be able to add to some of the work that you're doing. That's it. Just that quick and that simple. So like I said, hopefully you like these sort of things and, and you can just sort of add these little things to your toolbox to be able to make your work a little bit better. Yeah, look, if you like this content, you know, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell so you get the notification when these new episodes come out. And like I said, I'm going to keep doing these and trying to share all the stuff that I've spent years learning the hard way. So hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you. And hey, stay crazy.